for pre-production, continuing the workflow, storyboards, you have our boards, we have our shot numbers, we have our things in our scenes, so we create our construction lists based on the stuff in the scene. So we'd go through our entire boards and have these lists of everything that needs to be made. Then based on those lists, we can go ahead and start drawing our concept art because we know what we need to make from our construction list. Now we can draw it, then we can start modeling stuff. So for the construction list, all you do is like there we have a storyboard frame. It, hopefully it's big enough so you can see it. Maybe it's not, but I know my drawing style isn't really easy to understand, but there's a moon there, there's some trees, there's some characters, so you see to the right, this is what it would look like. You would create this list, going down the list of the stuff to make, so it's like, okay, now I know what I need to make. And then you would just go through and start drawing all your concept art based on that list. So the thing that, with this workflow, what we're trying to do is eliminate the guesswork. So you never get to a point in production where you go, what do I do next? Because that's when you get lost and that's when you start to lose time. That's when you start to lose motivation and that's when your production kind of can fail. So, and I break down my construction list into three basic um, categories, character models, props, and sets. So I draw up this list. I start drawing my concept art. I break it down into those three different um, categories. So. And if you've done any 3D modeling, if you haven't, there's two basic forms of modeling, which would be polyg polygonal modeling and sculpting. So poly polygonal modeling is the older form of modeling. If you ever extruded polygons and boxes, this is the old form. So it's really good for in inorganic shapes, for hard surfaces. It's not so good for organic stuff. So something that's come up in the last maybe five, six years is 3D sculpting. So this is an extremely intuitive form of modeling, and it's great for organic and even inorganic stuff. So way back when, when you only had poly modeling, it was kind of like more like you had to be an engineer because you're pulling points and edges, and it didn't feel very intuitive, and it didn't feel very creative. It didn't feel like I can just go and use my imagination. But now with sculpting, which you would want to use like a stylus pen to do this, it's a lot like sculpting in the real world, so it's, it feels very creative and intuitive. So if you had tried 3D modeling in the past and just found it to be kind of boring and wasn't very much fun and really difficult, I would advise you to try out 3D sculpting to see maybe this is a thing for you. Because me, I couldn't model very well using polygonal modeling, but when I once I got into sculpting, I was like, oh, the whole world opened up to me. So if you tried it, um, maybe you want to try it again. There's a free program called Sculptress. It's totally free. It's a pretty, pretty um, good sculpting program. So you can go download that, try it out, and see maybe if sculpting's for you. You can try it. Maybe it'll give you some ideas, inspire you to like, hey, maybe I can actually make these 3D models. And something that I use through my whole workflow is to think modular. So I don't want to have to do the same work twice. I want to do as little work as possible for making my sets and actually getting to animating the film, to actually shooting the film. I just want to do what I have to do, do it as efficient, as fast as possible, so I can actually shoot my movie. So, when I say think modular, what I do is like, let's say, you see the screen on the right, which is a, an unrendered set. There's some wood paneling there. So, it's like, build a 2x4, texture it, build a panel of these 2x4s, and then have this panel, and then you just replicate them across your x-axis or whatever to build walls. You just stack them on each other. You build all these parts like you're building IKEA furniture or some kind of model house. That's the way you can work in 3D. If you just work smart, you can have just banisters, just rails, just caps, and then build pretty much everything out of these base parts. So that's what I do. And if you look on the left, that's a little um, that's showing my asset browser. So these are some of the props. There's a barrel there, a bucket. So each film you do, each project you do, you build up your asset library. There's an ashtray up there, a little airplane, a door. So you just you have more and more objects. So when you get to a new project, you're like, okay, I need an old cabin. All right, let me grab this bucket. Let me grab this thing. So you reuse it and use it. You do it in a modular way so you can just tack on to stuff. 